Hello, hello. So you're looking to improve the quality of your home recordings. Here's a little video about different types of microphones and which might work for you. There are some Amazon affiliate links in the descriptions for all the things that I mentioned in this video. Very broadly speaking, there are three different types of microphone setups that you might be considering for entry level home use. A USB microphone, a portable microphone, and a microphone with interface setup. So the first category we're gonna look at is USB microphones. We're going to be looking at brands like Blue, Rode, or Shaw. Most mics in this category you can just plug straight into your computer and you sound amazing over Zoom. They're super simple to use. Now I don't have one of these, but this is what they might sound like. They're designed to complement the human voice, so they pick up a lot of s and sh. This can help the voice sound quite clear as they emphasise every consonant you speak and the details of the voice. They can sound fine on instruments like the saxophone or the cello, but they might make the violin sound a little scratchy and they're not well built for a piano. These types of microphones can be quite limited in terms of sound quality, noise levels, and response to different volumes. They can be great for speaking on video calls, recording podcasts, and throwing together some ideas for a demo. But when you try to use them with more varied sounds, like a piano with loud and quiet sections, or a very loud trumpet, or even a more nuanced vocal performance, then they can struggle to keep up. The next lot are portable recorder microphones. We're looking at brands like Zoom, the audio company, not the video calling software, Shaw, and Tascam, but a lot of audio companies make these types of microphones. I'm using a Zoom H2N here. So this is the type of microphone that I'd buy if I didn't have a snazzy computer with audio software, or if I'd just rather record myself and then send that to other people for their projects. And as you would have guessed from the name, you can move them about. You could record a little song in the garden, take it to your drums in the garage where there are no plug sockets, or you can take it to record samples of things like rivers, or take it to rehearsals. Portable recorders usually work in stereo, meaning there's a left and a right captured by the microphone. And in short, that means if you move around the microphone, it can pick up that movement in a way that'll translate into headphones. This is particularly useful for drum kits, for pianos, for percussion setups, any ensemble where people are spaced in a room and there's a spread of left to right. An added bonus here is that some portable recorders, like this one, plug directly into your computer. So if you'd like it to, it can work just as a USB microphone would. Now not to pick sides, but this Zoom H2N is amazing for that kind of thing. You can plug it straight into your computer and be in stereo on your video calls. You can record straight into your audio programs and hear everything back instantly with no lag. And that's because of the headphone port here. The H1 by Zoom is also quite a bit cheaper and it does essentially the same thing. Portable recorders are a great choice for people wanting to record a variety of sounds at very high quality, whilst also having better sound for video calls. And finally, the microphone with interface setup. This setup could cost a little more money and potentially cause quite a lot more faff, but it's worth it in the long run if you think you're going to be doing a lot of recording. Now, as you may have guessed, I'm talking about two separate bits of kit, the microphone and the interface. Let's look at microphones first. Some popular brands include Shaw, Rode and Behringer, but there are lots of different brands with lots of different varieties, so we'll get into that in another video. The easiest and most versatile microphone will probably be the Shaw SM58. It's somewhat similar to the SM7B, which you're hearing right now. SM58s are great for voice and they also work live. They're generally great great for an all-round versatile microphone if you're playing a brass instrument or a saxophone or an electric guitar these work really well with loud sounds. The SM58 is probably the most common microphone on the planet so if you get used to using this microphone you'll be set for a whole host of live concert venues and most studios. It's a really valuable skill to know how to use a microphone really well and to know how it reacts to the sound of your instrument and especially with a mic this popular you can pick it up anywhere and know exactly what to expect. Large diaphragm condenser microphones are another popular type. They're great for almost anything. Designed for vocals, they work well on anything that's not too loud. You could look at the Rode NT1A, which is what I have here, or the Behringer C1, or there's a microphone made by Focusrite, which we can talk about later on. This type of microphone sounds amazing on a cello, an acoustic guitar, a clarinet, even a piano. Very versatile for softer sounds, but not as usable in a live setting. Now interfaces are boxes which go between your microphone and your computer. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. As with the microphones earlier, there are far too many brands to name here, but some entry-level brands include Focusrite, M-Audio, and Behringer. You can think of an interface as a fancy adapter. It turns an XLR lead into a USB. In short, an interface is a box that turns a microphone like this into a USB microphone that we spoke about earlier on. You can record and talk on video calls just as easily as you would with a USB microphone, only with a few more leads. But with an interface, you get far higher audio quality. You can use lots of different types of microphones and you can adjust your settings really precisely to minimize hissing, noise levels, and distortion. Volumes. 
Another huge benefit of most audio interfaces is that you could plug an electric guitar or an electric keyboard directly into it. You get these really cool sockets which work both for an XLR, which is a microphone cable, and a jack. So this could be perfect to record guitar if you don't have an amp, and even if you do it can be great to get a clean sound. Another bonus here is that you can use multiple microphones or inputs together. You can record a full drum kit, or a guitar with a voice, or a piano with a voice, or all of the above together. You get the idea, you just need the mics to plug into the interface. Many brands selling interfaces also sell microphones alongside them to make bundles, like Focusrite for example. This can be really cost effective and can get you on track for a great setup, if that's what works for you. So the whole interface setup is incredibly versatile, just slightly complicated. To conclude, there are loads of different ways to go with microphones and every case is different but I can try to shed some light here. If you want to record without a computer, go for a portable recorder. If you need a lot of variety with what you record, like different instruments, then I would go with the interface setup and start with one mic. The beauty of having an interface setup is that you can upgrade step by step and you can spread out the cost. And if you want everything to be really easy, you just want to plug into your computer and go, then you have a choice. Either a USB microphone or a portable recorder with audio interface capabilities. I would personally always go for a portable recorder because the actual sound can be a lot more natural and they're far more versatile than a USB microphone. But setting all that up might still be a bit too complicated for you, then you go for a USB microphone. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope that helped. If you have any questions for me or suggestions on what might make a good video, then leave them in the comments. And if I helped you decide what microphone you might want to use, then like and subscribe. I wonder if that actually works. There are some Amazon affiliate links in the descriptions for all the things that I mentioned in this video. But do feel free to hunt around and support your local music shop. A bonus tip, this will be covered in my next video, but I'd recommend getting a good quality mic stand or tripod, and you need to know which one your microphone takes. Most microphones with an interface will take a mic stand, most portable recorders will take a tripod, and most USB microphones will come with a stand. You don't want to be spending all this money on a really nice microphone only to knock it off a pile of books. You also don't want to hold it. Even if you're singing and staying really still, your hand can make a lot of noise on the microphone. Thanks for watching. didn't have Oh, I hope that doesn't last long.